Welcome back to all our attendees. We are back with our next speaker, Mr. Rui D'Souza, Industry Advisor, Energy and Natural Resources at SAP, speaking on today's topic, SAP ERP solutions to support your digital enablement. Over to you, Rui. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Melvin. Uh, yeah. Appreciate for the audience and your time. Uh, so let me let me get started. So, so, so I mean, uh, first, I wanted to acknowledge a noble pursuit of the oil, uh, gas, and the energy industry, right? And this extends to, with, to utilities. This is about the delivering safe, reliable, and sustainable energy products and services, focus on the customer, and enabled by innovation. Okay? We need to acknowledge that this is also not easy, right? Uh, because whilst you have those basic responsibilities, you need also to embrace new and emerging technologies to help addressing the strategic priorities. Okay, focusing on uh, oil and gas uh, and energy, uh, I mean we we understand that, that strategic priorities is extending beyond the barrel, right? Uh, so there is money. Uh, on data, there is money on retail, there's a lot of things that we can go and it is important for people to consider uh, additional revenue streams. Also, the more we digitalize the products and services, the less of human error we are prone to commit and we can you know, optimize and fully automate uh, operations. Uh, as you know, the, the, the current issues uh, with the, the Canal de Suez until uh, recently demonstrated, we are in a more interconnected world. It's, we are part of a huge ecosystem and we need not only internally eliminate the silos, silos within the organizations, between the maintenance, the procurement, the operations and, you know, the headquarters, but also across the, the full network uh, of people that get involved, OEMs, uh, providers, uh, subcontractors. And fundamentally, we need to unlock the value of the technology, right? Not only reduce the costs, but beyond. Um, so the, 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 the industry is definitely moving from, uh, you know, uh, organization driven by a commodity to, to more uh, thinking about incremental value, where the disconnected process is moving to a more optimized real-time ecosystem dynamics from manual processes to fully automated uh, and in which data is all over the place and sometimes incomplete to being uh, seamlessly uh, available. And this is what we pursue, but how do we get there? How do different organizations get there, right? Uh, particularly when facing with projections about how digital is transforming the industry. So our vision at SAP is, is that we believe intelligent enterprises are going to lead the way. These are the ones that uh, automate as much as possible of the repetitive tasks over time to focus uh, employees on higher value uh, activities. This is particularly, uh, you know, makes it much more exciting also to the employees uh, of the future. And this is not only about optimizing the existing processes for, more, for efficiency, it's also about extending the current business processes beyond efficiency gains to figure out where are the next uh, sources of value. In oil and gas, many of them are now starting to think about utilities. Many of them are thinking about getting into electric vehicle charging and fundamentally consider how to transform uh, the company's uh, value chain or even the full business value. And, many models of innovation exist within these, uh, the, these broader, more traditional and somehow conservative industries. Let's put into practice in terms of how do we do this, right? Because, you know, easier said than done. It's about, you know, um, being able to, to, to deliver the digital, the intelligent enterprise, right? You need to, to, to have fundamentally a, have a business technology platform a layer of data and databases, a layer of analytics, intelligent technologies and the likes, the data lakes and so much other things with APIs that connected with the rest that bring it together, that are basically the foundation and the, uh, of the, the, the intelligent uh, inter, uh, enterprise. Um, but there's more than that, right? Ultimately, you are part of this ecosystem and the business network is important to help uh, companies 
interact with each other and uh, you know work on common um, and common goals whether it is for optimization of uh, assets or you even optimization about procurement and you know broadening the supply network it's also about experience management but we'll get into one of these uh, into some of these in more the, uh, at times what i wanted to focus today's attention is on what we call intelligent suite so this is basically you know the 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 suite of applications that help you running agile and integrated business processes. They go, they touch on the RP, but they go beyond this. But let's get into in turn in terms of what we're talking. So this is a little bit the same image, but then now let's uh, put our lenses on the applications on the suite. So the SAP, uh, everybody knows it's kind of a, a leader on, on ERP. That is basically typically the digital core of an organization. But we, our mandate is to, to, to deliver that intelligent enterprise. We need to bring the application suite together to help all the business priorities of the business from exploration, passing through trading, transport, all the way to sales and marketing, but not forgetting things complex, particularly in, the, in a wide environment around field logistics, equipment and services, without forgetting uh, you know, uh, the, the, the manufacturing, the conversion and the likes. Then across that, we SAP also provide plenty of solutions across multi, uh, multi uh, functional areas that are common and, you know, uh, uh, across multiple industries maybe tailor on instances to the oil and gas industry and to some of the particular challenges that we face, like the crew change and the likes in terms of how to capture these and how to optimize the processes that keep the entire operations and maintenance flowing. Now, as the focus today is around the ERP, basically we believe that you know, SAP of uh, uh, S4HANA, our intelligent uh, ERP, is the foundation for this intelligent enterprise. On top of you know, the, 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 the platform, you need a strong foundation that needs to be uh, help you and uh, facilitating running agile and integrated business processes, but also leveraging the best of the new technologies, whether they are artificial intelligence, machine learning, or the uh, interconnected with the internet of things. Okay. And um, so, some of you know i'll not dwell into the full technicalities of the system far from uh, from me but i just wanted to share one a few slides in terms of what we mean by you know uh, an advanced erp system how the future could look like now this is sometimes uh, uh, far from the realities of you know uh, 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 complex and built over time and sometimes integrated and merged uh, IT ecosystems on premise. But I just wanted us to pause for a while and think about how the future could look like, right? Imagine for a second, and you know, using the procurement uh, uh, function as an example, imagine for a second that you have 360 degree cockpits and analytical views that allow you to double click on each of these ones to get deeper in the specific areas of the process. Imagine almost having a control room in your desktop, at home, or even on your mobile device to be able to, at any moment in time, get real-time information uh, of your business. Fully customizable, but at least having this integrated uh, perspective of the view. Having these with enable analytics, because one thing is you looking at the data and trying to interpret it, but actually the, 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 the data that is captured having the system that tells you what to look at, what to look out for, whether it's yellow, red flags, and so on, areas to help you analyzing deeper what is happening, what are the root causes of potential inefficiencies in the process of specific delays of certain suppliers that help you, that basically augment you as a human being, as an engaged employee into getting to the next level of performance and be able to help you show you the inside and move you and compel you to action. Uh, and that could help you managing better production orders, ensure that you have material coverage to ensure you have, you know, spares and the likes whenever you need them within your core operations, right? Now have plenty of these also um, 
uh, geared to your specific needs because whether you see it you have a procurement responsibilities within finance or you sit in the procurement department but uh, are looking after the con conciliation you have different rules your needs and perspectives and your cockpit will look different in terms of how you look at the uh, at the business based on your tasks and responsibilities and fundamentally is about bringing you know this cross application analytics and insights from multiple applications right imagine the world in which you know procurement is just one part of the puzzle but imagine the world in which you are running a maintenance operations and you understand that the spares policy reflects your constant changing maintenance needs how you define your maintenance strategy will feed into the spares strategy and the spares will feed into the procurement process such that you optimize working capital and you ensure that you have spares exactly when needed optimizing uh, finance and basically optimizing the business and as much of these having fully automated and basically machine learning that learns from the activities that keeps evolving as you give feedback to the machine and be able to leverage as you know the more input is captured from the field operations to enable uh, better insights in the future so that's a little bit of how we think this uh, this could happen and how this could go across the business you know from procurement human resources and the likes that's the vision of course but that fundamentally all the companies are different and, fund, uh, and our ERP systems provide you uh, plenty of flexibility. Yes, cloud, you know, is the cheaper and is uh, from a total cost of, of operations is the most standardized and the like. But for a specific need uh, of uh, some of the bigger energy companies, they still need a fairly degree of flexibility, some kind of uh, tailoring of specific processes and the likes. So we will continue and continue committing to serving our customers both uh, on cloud and on premise. So our ERP services, and even if uh, if on the premise, we can also serve them as a service, right? To ensure that you move from a capex focus to a opex focus, creating more flexibility in the future. But fundamentally the basis of our erp are the same one cold line one single data model heavily simplified those that appreciate uh you know database structures sqls and all the likes uh, it's important to to verify that, 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 that there are significant innovative approaches in terms of how we think about the data and the, the data structures and more important than anything one user experience absolutely critical in the current context in the recent context of working from home in which in some of the uh, customers that we serve that needed to move to working from home the, the user experience was seamless move because they had the same fiora uh, apps that uh, that helped them uh, that they could work on their tablets or on their phones or their uh, desktops and the laptops without use of VPN with a single sign-on that allowed them to seamlessly move. And uh, in many cases, the only delay was how quickly could you buy new laptops for people that were more dependent on the desktops. Multiple uh, flexibility with regards from implementation all the way to license according to different customer needs because you're all unique. Now, the ERP is only part, right? It's a part as about the digital core. We mentioned already that the other line of business solutions complement the intelligent suite, whether those are with supply chain. So our Riba network, business network, as uh, is one of the, 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 if not the largest business network. So any new customer benefits from the information of every single customer and supplier that already included to the network. Since we have more Ariba customers on a global basis than ERP uh, customers, and each Ariba customers have their own network of suppliers, the network is vast in the area of millions. I forgot the exact number, but, uh, but fundamentally is about leveraging this ecosystem we all belong to. It's about uh, uh, best in class experiences in terms of managing human resources. 
uh, and uh, and uh, across the board because at the end digital core is like having the engine in the car if you have the engine in the car but you don't have the wheels you don't have the chassis you don't have the seats it's very difficult to run that and so you need to build the full picture to be able to run your enterprise to your best okay but beyond the business applications that make part of the intelligent suite is also about embracing uh, e other uh, solutions of the industry, a lot of them in the cloud. We, our industry cloud includes uh, SAP solutions, some specifics and shutdowns, turnarounds, and others that are a part of the key, clear needs of our customers within the energy sector, but also others that we embrace, we adopt. Corrosion under insulation manager, we've just recently signed uh, a JV uh, or an agreement with DNV for a specific product and offering around corrosion under insulation and whether in, it's in upstream oil and gas or downstream uh, or midstream refineries, petrochemicals or the likes, or even power stations. It's one of the massive issues affecting, if not some of you, a lot of other people out there in the field running the, your operations. Uh, so these are some of the examples, right, on the industry cloud and why that brings. We've mentioned about the network, and this is about how you connect uh, the intelligent enterprise with the, with the entire ecosystem. Imagine for a second that for the maintenance, you can basically have a dialogue in terms of, you know, all pieces of kit in your equipment, in your field, that all of a sudden you have the information for OEMs, all the subcontractors involved, and people that on a global basis can contribute to understanding the root cause of specific failure anomaly and help you problem solve on the ground in real time in terms of how the best to adjust uh, uh, the specific of maintenance approach for that asset right but that extends we mentioned procurement could extend to these intelligent asset management and these two particular asset in the, um, information network and to many many other networks that are important finally about experience management we um Qualtrics is one of our uh, the organizations that we made a big bold investment in 2019 that helps bring in information about uh, how customers feel right particularly important in utilities more than potentially in oil and gas upstream but definitely relevant as you think about the uh, petrol and future EV stations, right? How your employees feel about the experience, their onboarding, their learning, empowering them, right? And if you get information from your operation system that are the part of the intelligence suite that explains you what happened, right? Looking sometimes more historical than yet the future information for which uh, advanced analytics help, it's important to, to understand from customers, employees, why it happened, what were the main issues on the ground, how to get feedback on the ground that provides you insights that help you optimizing and you know tuning in better your operations. This is absolutely important area, how people think about your products and your brand, and how can you evolve them and better address customer needs. Finally, um, the world is changing fast and uh, I think COVID more than anything made us more conscious about other big uh, uh, issues on a macro level to happen about climate change. And we uh, established Climate 21 as an initiative to bring together industry practitioners to help us thinking about sustainability. We started by assessing the sustainability data and by integrating data, we can figure out how much emissions of different types we capture. The view is that we leverage that data to try to figure out how we can uh, analyze them, uh, act accordingly and lead to, uh, to, to CO2 reduction. We need to make our part in terms of, uh, of uh, making a more sustainable future across the board, across the energy sector. And finally, beyond the sustainability, we mentioned about this business technology, right? About database analytics, bring the best suite, ensure that you know uh, all of these can integrate multiple things, not only SAP products, but uh, non-SAP products and environments. We can ensure we can uh, collect and bring these all together in a seamless and integrated uh, way. 
and bring, blend it with the best of intelligent uh, technologies to help it moving from grade to greater. And finally, uh, I'm, I think I'm coming to the end of my, uh, my time. Uh, so if this is inspiring, this is not, uh, this is not a, a dream, this can be a reality. We establish what we now call uh, business transformation as a service, both to existing customers, no doubt, but also to new customers, in which basically we bring together to, to, to help understanding where you are, where is the current situation, uh, to, to, help, to, to help shaping this future together, right? And uh, not many words in these, but basically we all start, uh, we look at the starting point, whether you're a lean or a complex organization, the, the speed you need the change. Uh, we work with business process redesign uh, we, and you know, the, uh, business process intelligence to try to understand what are the processes that can be further simplified and optimized. Very important. So if you are going to look at your basis, you might holistically look at all, all the areas and then bring in the best of the toolkit necessary for, for the migration and so on, bringing the best practice into play. Fundamentally to help you building this intelligent network uh, intelligent enterprise. So the networks above, as we've seen, what are the applications that are required and simplified as much as, uh, as possible? What is the right platform to enable it? And basically the infrastructure, whether it is on premise or with hyperscales or the like. On um, so so that's that's a little bit my um, my discussion. So so this is my last slide. Um, open for questions as appropriate, and if there is time. All right. Thank you, sir, for the lovely presentations. So far, Rui, we do not have any questions. If there are questions, we will forward it to you where you can answer them directly. OK. Thank you so and much. Have a nice afternoon, and happy Easter to you and your family. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.